What was Yoel Romero doing? I mean, I get he's 46 years old, which is very old for the fight game, and he was trying to become the oldest champion in MMA history, right? I know a lot of people are going to say he's old. Of course, he's going to be doing stuff like that. No, when you're older, your athleticism goes out the window. The guy looked extremely athletic out there. The way he was moving very well, he looked like he was 20 years old with his body. A little bit on the thick side, but a little thickness doesn't hurt anyone. Romero was just relying on playing possum, lulling his opponent into some big shot and using his athleticism. There was really nothing backed up by real technique here. And it's crazy because after all these years, he looks like the same guy. Understandably so at his age, but even as you age older, you do develop better techniques. It's just you don't have the speed, the reflexes, the flexibility to necessarily execute these techniques properly. But Romero's the other way around. It's like he's diminishing in his techniques and he's keeping his athleticism, which really doesn't make sense. The guy should be studied. We've never seen anybody like Yoel Romero. He's probably the most athletic person I've ever seen. But like what was all with the drunken fist stuff, right? These are the techniques he was trying to use to lull his opponent into his shots. And it wasn't working against Nemkov because Nemkov fought extremely intelligent. And then after the drunken fist didn't work, then he started like lowering his head and walking into punches. He was literally walking into punches constantly. And then after that, he exploded and went into the clinch. I was questioning the whole time, why wasn't Yoel Romero shooting takedown? The guy is an elite level wrestler that even showed in the fifth round that Nemkov is not on his level when it comes to wrestling at all. Not even close. So with Romero taking him down in the fifth round, imagine what he would have been able to do if he even attempted a takedown early on. He fought Nemkov's game for four and a half rounds before he finally went into his game. We were able to see ways that Yoel could have made this a lot more competitive. And he just did the opposite of what he probably should have done. Most likely his corner was telling him. Takedowns early are going to be used to make his striking a lot harder to deal with later on because Nemkov is going to be anticipating the takedowns and that's where the big shots from Romero can come out there. Potentially the flying knee. And then those big strikes are going to make his takedowns even easier. But instead of doing that, he did the opposite. He struck with Nemkov the whole fight, got Nemkov very used to the range and how to deal with Romero and especially with his explosions, and then went for the takedown two minutes left of the fight and you saw that Nemkov was not ready for it. Do you know how frustrating it was to see how easy that takedown came and how easy Romero held him down in the fifth round? There was no more questioning Romero's ability to get a takedown at his older age after you saw that. Then you start to think, why didn't he do this earlier? If he could do it in the fifth round, I was honestly questioning at his age if he could even get a necessary takedown on Nemkov at all. But he did it in the fifth round where it was supposed to be much harder for him to do. It would have been so much easier for him to do it in the first. He was the statue of God again. The same guy that fought Adesanya showed up against Nemkov. This really confirmed to me that Romero was the main variable as to why that Adesanya fight back in the day was so boring. For like three rounds straight, this guy just stood in front of Nemkov and did nothing. The numbers at the end, Yuel only landed 47 total strikes, and Nemkov landed 143. Nearly 100 more strikes were landed from Nemkov. Yuel seemed to not have the fundamental technique to close the distance on Nemkov. At least that's what most people were saying. But he did. Takedowns, man. Where were they? Instead of using the traditional method to get in, he relied on his athleticism, even at 46 years old, to just pounce from a distance and try to land something big. He didn't do it enough, honestly. When he attacked in that manner, it was actually the most success he was having in the fight outside of the takedown in the last round, which is crazy to think about because Romero, at 46 years old, took a round off of the champion in Bellator. This should have been a 5-0 win for Vadim Nemkov, and he lost the fifth round. Did not look good on the bottom. There's multiple things I can say about this. So, firstly, Romero going into the clinch when there's like two minutes left of the fight and he's down on the scorecards was very questionable. If he just went for broke and just started throwing at Nemkov and risked it all, because this is probably his last title shot in his entire career, he would have to do all he could to secure this if he wants to become a champion. If he wants to fight another day, he probably doesn't want to do that, but, but he only has a few days left. So going into the clinch and then going for the takedown was very questionable. Nemkov did hold on to the overhooks to stall the fight, but there were many moments in the clinch before that happened where Romero could have disengaged from the clinch and not entertain it at all. But he stood in there for so long that Nemkov got the overhooks, kept Romero in the clinch, and that's where Romero was able to trip him out and get on top. And this ties in with the whole ground and knees that we talked about before in the Aljamain Sterling versus Henry Cejudo fight. Nemkov, while on the bottom and north-south, was protecting himself by hiding his head in between Yuel's legs. His head is in his crotch, and that's how he's defending himself. That should not be a thing ever. This is a perfect position to throw ground and knees. 
A fighter should not be able to hide their head in between someone's legs in a position that would be so dangerous in any other context outside of sport. He would have to maneuver his way out of that position entirely. North-South is a position that's pretty difficult to get into. It was so weird to watch it because it was almost like Nemkov was in the better position which should not be a thing at all. And at the end of the day, Vadim Nemkov defeats Yuval Romero, 49-46 on the scorecards, and man, Romero probably needs to retire. If this is the way he's fighting, it's a bit different than what he was before. Because when he fought Whitaker, for an example, he didn't fight necessarily this way. Whitaker is also a technical striker who likes to strike from distance, and Romero did not fight this way against him. It's against these longer, taller guys that he just loses himself and it's like his technique goes completely out the window after all of these years in the sport i mean he only has 18 professional fights but after all of these years competing in mma you would think he would have developed a way to get in on these taller and longer guys but time and time again it's showing that yoel romero just doesn't have the technique or the skill to get in effectively outside of using his natural born athleticism and i can't understand what his corner was telling him but either they weren't telling him anything that was good or he just wasn't listening to them. It was pretty difficult to watch if you were a Yoel Romero fan to see him fight this way again. It's like he's not learning and Romero's just going to do Romero things. He didn't go for takedowns up until the last minute of the fight, which it should have been the other way around. He should have went for takedowns in the beginning of the fight where they're dry and it becomes much easier rather than the end of the fight where the takedowns are harder to get and you're wasting your time at getting a finish so you can win the fight. But Nemkov looked amazing, right? Nemkov, in front of Romero acting like a punching bag out there, he looked as good as you can, right? He was throwing out really good combinations. I really liked the straight right into left high kick he kept throwing throughout the entire fight. His kicks in general were very good, especially for a light heavyweight at his size. And the best adjustment that I saw him making was the uppercuts when Romero was cross-guarding Joe Frazier style, and the uppercuts are coming upward through the guard. Those are actually the shots that were catching Romero the cleanest, all the other stuff were glancing shots. There were some straights that was catching him, but Nemkov was like target practicing. There was only one time he faced adversity, and that was the time he looked like a fish out of water. For pretty much the whole fight on the feet, he had complete control, target practicing, just throwing out the same techniques over and over again, and Romero had no answers to this, except just exploding. And that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to give this a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe, leave in the comments below. What did you guys think about the fight? What do you think about Yoel Romero's performance? What did you think after he got the takedown in the fifth, and then retroactively watch the fight again and be like, man, he could have done that the whole time. What do you think about guys like Romero and Michael Chandler and certain fighters who are so physically gifted, have athletic ability that most people on the planet could never have yet fight in a completely different way that causes them to lose fights is it fair i guess i mean if you have all the physicality in the world it's hard to be as smart as like john jones or something right but then again jones has insane physical attributes as well that's probably why he is the greatest because he has the physicality as well as the mental at the highest level whereas guys like romero and chandler have the physicality at the highest level but that's pretty much it. So make sure to leave that in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video.